Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News on iTunes. Dwyer Boxing News, one word. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there are going to be times where I disagree with the public, right? There are going to be times where, quite frankly, I think that public opinion gets too far ahead of itself, where the public falls in love with a fighter and where knockouts, as I like to say, cause amnesia. You're getting all of that tonight regarding Janady Golovkin's third round knockout of Daniel Gill. Right? I know the popular narrative is that Golovkin looked dominant. He might be the best thing since sliced bread. He uh, belongs on the pound for pound list. He looks unstoppable. There's a uh, punching power gap between him and every opponent. And opponents on the clock from the start of the opening bell. Daniel Gill had never been stopped in his career. Here, it didn't even take Janady Golovkin three full rounds to stop him. Now, let me say this. Right? This isn't a sour grapes video. Understand, I had a good night. Right? Brian Jennings won his fight. Right? If you want to know my view on the Jennings fight, just look at the pre fight video. Right here on YouTube. Um, Janady Golovkin. While I privately thought the fight would go a lot longer and be a lot closer, understand part of my hedge was Janady Golovkin by KO, right? And I didn't pay the 16 to 1 odds for that. I got that at minus 333, as did most gamblers, right? So the casino gave me my money back. I would have made a profit if Daniel Gill had won the fight. That's how I structured my own play, okay? So I'm not here complaining about losing money. I'm not here blaming anybody for the loss. I'm not blaming the referee. I'm not blaming the judges. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just here to tell you though, if you kill the volume on the telecast, I need to have everyone here look at the fight. If you kill the volume on the telecast, you're going to see that Janady Golovkin, quite frankly, looked as limited at times as Canelo did against Erislandi Lara. Understand, you know, he's too front foot heavy. Right? He had a problem with Daniel Gill's movement. I know he knocked down Gill multiple times, but he had a problem with Daniel Gill's movement to the point where Gill started to figure him out. Now I'm curious to hear what Daniel Gill has to say in the coming days, but what I want you to do is to focus on one moment in the fight, and it's a key moment in the fight. It's the last punch Daniel Gill throws in the fight. It's his best punch. It's the punch right before. Daniel Gill gets knocked out, right? It's the punch right before he gets stopped. It's his best punch in the entire fight. And what I want you to do is I want you to see how naked Janady Golovkin is. He gets hit with the punch. Flush. He doesn't have a hand up. He's exposed. Now he comes across with his own right hand, literally less than a second later. And Daniel Gill doesn't have a hand up to block that last right hand. The point is this, if you don't believe that Janady Golovkin opens himself up defensively to counters, then you need to come up with an explanation on how Daniel Gill was able to land that last punch so flush. 
if you kill the volume and if you get away from the HBO love fest, right, if you just look at the fighters, there are times in the fight where Golovkin is just looking at Daniel Gill move around the ring, right? The lateral movement is killing him. Where Gill makes a mistake is when Gill comes forward on Golovkin, right? Golovkin's doing nothing special. Golovkin just shells up a little bit. It would have been great if Daniel Gill would have taken one step further. Get so close to Golovkin that you turn it into a little bit of a wrestling match. The mistake a lot of people make on Golovkin is they go backward. The knockout. Right, and I'm talking about in the third round. Right, because I think we all know that that's the only one that really involved a heavy punch, don't we? Right? The knockout in the third round takes place. And I say knockout, it's really a technical knockout. Giel gets back up, doesn't want to continue. But takes place with Giel too close to the ropes. Now let me just tell you, certain fighters, right, Hopkins, Mayweather. They'll keep the fight when they want in the middle of the ring by having you walk into their shoulder. But even though they have you on a shoulder, that doesn't negate their lateral movement. So what you saw here was a fighter who's front foot heavy, who quite frankly looked a bit lost, didn't have answers for the lateral movement, right? When Daniel Gill moved, the fight's competitive. That first round, right? The one that went four minutes. Someone's going to have to explain to me how that could happen at Madison Square Garden in a championship fight. What Tom, Dick, or Harry did they have keeping time for this fight? But that first round, the one that went too long, there are times in the first round where Janady Golovkin is a bystander. In other words, there's no mystery to his game. You know he's going to try to hunt you down on his front foot. You know he's going to try to cut off the ring. You know he's going to be flat-footed. Look at his feet. He's not up on his toes. You know he's going to be throwing hooks with both hands to try to take you out once he gets close enough to you. Right? If you're able to get inside and force him on his back foot, he's not the same fighter. If you get up close and turn him, He's not the same fighter. If you time it, like Gil did, right before getting knocked out, there's a chance that when you throw counters, he's going to be wide open for them. You want to know what he does in dealing with Daniel Gill's last punch? And keep in mind, it's a right hand. Gill's right-handed. It's not even exotic. It's not even like a left hook with Gill's offhand. It's his dominant hand. You want to know what Golovkin does? This is what he does. He gets hit. The punch comes. That's what he does. He gets hit right on the chin. Right? He's just lucky. And Gill, by the way, loads up on the punch. He's just lucky that Gil doesn't have a hand up as you know Bernard Hopkins would. He's just lucky he doesn't have a hand up and doesn't have his head tucked further as he throws that timed counter. Let me point out too, that's in the third round. 
right? Daniel Gill figures out the pattern by the third round. Golovkin's getting hit with flush shots early, just like he was in the Kasim Uma fight. So, with all due respect, my advice to boxing fans is to view Golovkin fights as an opportunity. I wouldn't waste time thinking about Golovkin against a world-class fighter winning by decision, right? Because, quite frankly, right, he had problems with Daniel Gill. He's far ahead on the scorecard against Daniel Gill because he's getting knockdowns, right? He gets a knockdown in the second, he gets a knockdown in the third. Okay, fair enough, right? But the point is, without those knockdowns, he was having a problem with Daniel Gill's movement. Let me say this. I know many people are saying, who can beat Gennady Golovkin, right? From where I sit, let me give you a list. I think Bernard Hopkins, about to turn 50, beats him. Why? Because Hopkins is going to realize that this guy needs a little of space to operate. Hopkins can crowd him inside. Hopkins can turn him. Look at the Kelly Pavlik fight. Didn't we think for a moment there that Kelly Pavlik, who was unbeaten when he fought Bernard Hopkins, hit too hard and was too good to lose? Right? Isn't that where we are right now in Gennady Golovkin's career? Let me tell you another fighter who could beat him, in my opinion. Andre Ward. Right? Let me name another guy who could beat him. Now keep in mind, Golovkin's a bigger man. Right? He's a taller man. But if he were to go down to 154, as BoxingScene.com in an article claimed that his representative said he was willing to do, I take Mayweather over him. You know, understand. Mayweather would stand his ground in the middle of the ring when Golovkin comes over to him. Right? Mayweather would be inside of Golovkin's punches. As I've said here before, Golovkin's never made it to the 11th round. He's never made it to the 12th round. Right? Look at some of the shots Daniel Gill lands on him. Right? No one's going to tell me that Golovkin's defense is stellar or that Golovkin isn't a bit too aggressive. As I've said, please, just look at the last punch Daniel Gill throws in the fight. That's all I ask. Look at where Golovkin's hands are. He gets hit. Look at Gill right before he throws the punch. It's not a lucky punch. He's setting traps. Right? Gill got caught. Golovkin won the fight. I certainly expected a closer fight than this. As I said before the fight, I thought Daniel Gill had a 40% chance of beating him. Let me shake things up here. I still think Daniel Gill has a 40% chance of beating him. Should they fight again? I know it's not going to happen, but just understand, this fight was closer than people want you to believe. I don't know how you could watch the first round and feel you were watching a blowout. I don't know how you could watch the third round right up until the knockdown and feel that you were watching a blowout. I don't know how the first knockdown where there isn't even a clear punch can be viewed as proof that, you know, Gennady Golovkin was the vastly superior fighter. Now, you can tell when a fighter is hopelessly overrated, right? The odds for this fight in some casinos were greater than 16 to 1. I'm just here to tell you that they're going to be even more inflated. Given the hype right now, one wonders who would be favored 
if Golovkin fought someone like Bernard Hopkins. I'm guessing Golovkin would be favored, right? Understand, a guy who can get up on his chest and turn him would force Golovkin to fight on his back foot. We don't know if he can do that, folks. Right? A guy who is patient enough and remembers to have his defense up. Right? Daniel Gill throws a punch. It's a great punch. Then gets caught flush. Gill has a hand like here, but the punch comes over here. Gill's head's not tucked after the punch. An Andre Ward or a Bernard Hopkins would have their head tucked. What happens if Golovkin's counter after the flush punch thrown by a Hopkins or a Ward that's similar to the flush punch thrown by Gill? What happens if Golovkin's counter gets blocked? What happens if these guys are not only turning Golovkin, but are up on him, making the match more of a wrestling match? I think James DeGale beats Golovkin. Right? My point to you is, Golovkin's so overvalued, understand, it's a rare day when you see the kind of odds that you saw tonight. So my takeaway is that the fight, quite frankly, wasn't as uncompetitive as the press reports would lead you to believe. Right? I haven't heard the HBO feed. I wisely kill the volume. Right? If you want to see a video of the fight, I've put it in my favorites here on YouTube. You want to see the fight quickly on YouTube before they take it down. Right? I've linked to the fight in my favorites. All you have to do is click on it to watch it. Let me just say, now it's not the HBO feed, but what I want you to do is to kill the volume and just watch the fight. If the fight has 20 second segments where Daniel Gill is circling Janady Golovkin and Golovkin's not doing much, right? If the fight has moments where Daniel Gill comes inside and Golovkin takes a step back but doesn't really do anything on his back foot. Right? If the fight has moments where you notice Daniel Gill setting up traps and ducking under Golovkin punches. Right? Like the very last portion of the fight. Then you'll know that Golovkin shouldn't be a double digit odds favorite over world class fighters. Now, there's talk about him against Miguel Cotto. Let me just say, Cotto's a difficult matchup for him. Because understand, Cotto's shorter than him, and Cotto can fight short. Cotto also, these days, is moving around the ring. Look at the Delvin Rodriguez tape. Look at the Sergio Martinez tape. Right? I still believe that lateral movement gives Golovkin a problem, right? I'm not going to add Kodo's name to the list of people who can beat Janady Golovkin, but let's just say, rest assured, that if uh, in that fight I hear that Golovkin is a 16 to 1 favorite straight up, rest assured that I'll be rushing in to take Kodo in that fight simply to win hedged against Golovkin by KO, right? The hype really predetermines the bet. And understand, the way we bet this one, the hedge held, Golovkin by KO, don't even waste your money. Taking Golovkin simply to win straight up, I'm guessing, just like Giel started to figure it out in the third round, and that third round is key. That's a competitive round before the knockdown. Right? The knockdown seems to have erased the memory on the rest of the round. The third round is competitive before the knockdown. Right? You just get the feeling that if Golovkin isn't knocking down an opponent, he could be methodically outboxed. Let me hear from you. He won the fight. No question about it. He is the champion. 
No question about it. Right? No question about it. He's not unbeatable. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.